Hey, it's your boy Chango coming at you with another video. This one is 33 minutes of Joey Diaz stories. Loft brought to you by Laugh Planet. I never get tired of Joey Diaz. I'm excited. Let's get right into it. I flew after Joe the other day. I flew on the flight afterward, and I had fucking a bag. I knew an F word was coming. With, uh, I had a little bag of reefer in my fucking. Uh, no, you didn't. I do. Well, this is a conspiracy thing. This is just to show you how hard the airport people are working with their fucking x ray machine. Now, I had it in a baggie, and I put it under my left nut. <laughs> no, okay, we're not telling this story. So That's yes, enough. <laughs> yes, for freedom of speech, I'll call Obama right now, motherfucker. <laughs> this is real corruption. I'm sorry, I got freedom. This is out of control. No, this is not. You're out of order. Little S is out of order. This whole fucking joint's out of order. He is worse. <laughs> he, hold on. He he is worse than uh, than Avi Bravo. Much worse than. Don't bring. I love him, but don't bring this monster in here. I was in here. It's like a. It's like a. It's like a crazy Fred Flintstone. Honesty. I'm giving you honesty. I'm telling you, Fred Flintstone. No. People know. I don't want. Okay. We're looking for the truth on this show. This is about the truth. I, I it's got a point. I got there and I had baggy clothes on. And I had a belt on. They said, because you have baggy clothes on, they didn't know I lost. This is great. Pounds. They said we're gonna put you to the X-ray machine. I'm standing there sweating bullets. With this baggie under my fucking oh, left that's nut. enough. Stop. My left nut's bigger than the right nut because I'm a righty. Stop. People don't know that. I thought I had cancer for a couple of weeks. You know, the opposite hand is it's always like bigger than the, is in the control room. Listen to me. So I'm standing <laughs> with my legs open, with this weed stinking. You're There's like Rodney Danger. Listen, stop rocking, fucking Rodney. I had this weed that was stinking up a storm. Not to mention my balls. I'm sweating now because I'm going to go to jail tonight. And all of a sudden, the guy goes, "He's clear," and he shook my hand. I'm like, "My taxpayers are hard at work." Yeah. There was this lady in my block. That was a MILF. Mm -hmm. Before the MILF, this is 1979. Some... Nobody knew what a MILF show was. She had big tits and she'd always wear, uh, uh, what, what do you call those things? In the 70s, the, the that were. Negligee? No, no, no. The, oh, fishnet? No, no. They wore, uh, you just pulled it over your chest. A corset? Like no. a halter top? <laughs> I don't know. Tube top or something? You pulled it over your chest in the 70s. And you could just pull it down and show your tits out. Just oh, yeah, oh yeah. a tube top. Tube top. Tube top. Whatever the fuck. Oh, the tube top. Whatever the fuck. Yeah, because we had big tits. Yeah, you would just tuck just, them in the shirt. You just pull the tube top down, <coughs> so and then you could suck those titties. She had two dogs that had that were blind, two French poodles that were blind. <laughs> <laughs> she'd have to cross them across the street, and they'd shit in the park when we were playing basketball. And she'd have little hot pants. How old was she? Little flip-flop. If I was 14, 15, she was 39. Wow. 40. And every time she was over there walking the dog, I let the ball go down the hill just so I could walk by her. Of course. Ass. She was mint. Mm -hmm. Titties, everything was mint. So I, and, but her husband, she, this is how hot she was. Her, whenever she walked the dog, the husband would go on the balcony to watch to make sure none of us attacked her. Because <laughs> he knew we were a bunch of banditos. We would have picked her up. He knew, right? What's that movie, the fucking Outlaw Josie Wales, when they find the blonde? behind the fucking thing and they pull it by our legs. That's us when we were 13. Oh, like that? We were looking to fuck somebody. We just didn't know who to fuck. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I ran with a crew that was looking to fuck. We were just looking for the right one. Like woman. straw dogs. But nobody knew. Remember that movie? Oh, Jesus. Yeah, All knew. those fucking guys hanging out on the roof. We were ready to go, but nobody knew I was in love with Faye. The like, Faye? That was her name, Faye, and I was going to take her down. And she had two daughters. <laughs> take her down. One daughter I was friends with. The other daughter dated and ended up marrying my Goomba. Really? Tight friend of mine. So after we we listened to Led Zeppelin too, we ate a bunch, we did some angel dust, and we drank some beers, and everybody said, oh, we're going to a party. How did she dress? Was she? Always hot pants. Always she hot? Always showed that. Short, dress. short shorts? Always short, short shorts. Always. It could be fucking 10 below, and she'd have a fucking hot pants. So she knew what she was doing. Oh, yeah. She right? Was, and her nipples would always be hard in the winter. Oh, my God. Her face was gorgeous. So one night I said, tonight's tonight, I'm taking that bitch down. It had been about two years. At night, when she would walk the dog at 11, the husband was older than her. Like, her husband was like 60. I'm oh, glad she was oh. in for the program. Yes. Oh, she was there for the, for the ride. Yeah, she was. That wasn't the girl's father. <laughs> no. So I, I went, I got some of my mother's flowers, and I went and hid by the bushes and waited for to come down with the That's two French creepy. poodles. And when she, would put the, when she was going to bend over to, to put the French poodles down, I was just going to tackle her. And then give her the flowers. Who tackles you and gives you flowers? I'm a class act. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get the flowers? Fucked. I walked up behind her as I saw her. I grab her. She turned on. She goes, Coco, what a surprise. I go, I brought these for you. I had my best cologne on. I brushed my teeth. Brushed my teeth. Listerine, everything. Listerine. I was ready to eat her from the inside out. And I had never even had sex with a woman before. And she 
She's like, what are these for? And I told her how I felt. I love you. I want to run away with you. Told her that? Oh, everything. I told her everything I needed to tell. I had tears in my eyes. I got emotional. And she goes, that's so sweet. And I go, can I kiss you? And she told me that if she ever gets divorced, that she'd consider me. Like, <laughs> like she just told me, because I'm such a jerk off. You know what I'm saying? You're 15, 14. I was, I was a young kid. And then I go, can I kiss you? And she goes, absolutely. And I kissed her on the cheek. And then I looked down, and I just started staring at her pussy. And she goes, what's the problem? And I just started getting red. You know, when you're 14, you get one duck to get red and red. And she goes, what's the matter? And I go, I just want to touch your thigh. She goes, okay. And I touched, like, the bottom of her thigh. Mm -hmm. And I could just feel blood coming out of my dick. I just came out of that. I run home like Steven Seagal. My mom, Steven, used yeah. to run all limped up like he was a half a retard in the book mm -hmm. of law. That's how I fucking <laughs> ran all fucking all fucked up. Oh, my I God. I never said that to nobody. And then about four years ago, me and my boomba Bobby went out for breakfast, and I go, I would tell you the time I was going to fucking rape Faye. And he goes, why, why am I hearing about this now? Right. Well, it was 1979. I was a young kid. I was in love with Faye. That's fucked. Because you know Faye lives with me now. Because, really? Yeah, he's married to the daughter. Oh my God! So he, and I go, how's she look? And he goes, she's gone by. She's seventy years old. And you know what? She walks around the house all day telling me how horny she is. Really? He goes, maybe. And I, I, I'm like, what are you fucking? That's seventy something. We giggled. We giggled, and that was it. And about two weeks later, I get a call one afternoon. It's Bobby, and I answer the phone. Go, What's up, Bobby? He goes, hold on, somebody wants to talk to you. And he put Faye on the phone. She's like, how you doing, sweetheart? Why don't you come visit me? I'm like, ah. Oh, my God. Okay. But I still remember when I was playing kickball with Lucy Snorbush. <laughs> That's not a real name, Joey. That's not a real name. <laughs> Who had a fucked up That's an iCarly name. This bitch had a fucked up mug, but she was like 5'8 in the eighth grade, and I broke into a house one and ate her pussy one night on a quail. I just couldn't take it. This bitch was banging. And after my mother died, we Lucy lived. Snodgrass? I lived with Bob Bender. Her name was Lucy Snowbush. <laughs> and she had, oh, yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I climbed up a fucking ladder like, like, oh, oh, Susanna, won't you cry for me? I climbed up the ladder, <laughs> opened up a door. I knew she was out drinking, so she was going to say nothing. I just jumped on the bed, ate her pussy, and left like a burglar. And like, it was, her name was Lucy Snowbush. <laughs> and she was fucked. She, her grill was okay. But her body was banging. Her grill was she okay. She was like seven. This bitch was banging. I was like eight. I met her. But she used to have a, she used to have a, a gold pot. pussy on a quail. <laughs> oh, broke so into her house. I was like 17. So casual. And like I was walking down the hill to the house. I'm thinking about whose pussy am I going to eat tonight. And I knew this chick was out. Like she was out earlier. And whenever she drank, she was kind of loose dog. I went right into her yard, put a ladder in, climbed up the fucking ladder, opened the window. She's like, who's there? Who's there? Don't even ask. She just fucking pulled her pants, ate a monkey, and climbed back out like a fucking vampire. That's she, seemed like, she seemed like a week later, she's like, that was... Dude, after hearing these stories, I wouldn't be surprised if he was on some list somewhere. <laughs> Like a, like a serious naughty list of some sort. Yeah, what he's saying is pretty fucked. Like he would he would not <laughs> he would not get away with half of this shit now, right? I mean back in the 80s or whatever the fuck these stories take place, 70s. Yeah, he's not getting away with this kind of shit. <laughs> Fucking Joey. Oh, let's carry on. Amazing that night. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Fuck my, yeah. I my windows like, are locked. Like a thief in the yeah. night and shit. I didn't even bang the pussy. I just ate it and left. Really? Like a doctor. Fuck yeah. Just, <laughs> like doctor. Listen, I was like 16. I'd probably come in my pants already. I'm not already. <laughs> And say like I had no dick left. Oh after you God. eat some, ch after you break into a chick's house and eat a snack. Wait, you can't say that to someone, Joey. No one never's done that. But I had oh, made out with her before. Yeah, yeah, basketball parties. When we were kids. I know you're talking about that. You never before, tried to sneak kids. into a chick's house. You eat a pussy on the quail? No. <laughs> No, not that God. part. Good not that part. Yeah, but you know, you add in plus factor in Joey Diaz. 
What happened? Oh okay, God. no. I see, you know, you're saying, uh, yeah, but never on a Quaalude. I said, well, that's what Joey Diaz. you got to factor that oh, in. Yeah. Oh, the Quaalude was good, too. I was all horned up and shit, though. Oh but, but with that, that would show that there's women out there sitting in the house waiting for them to be eaten up. Like, she didn't put up a fight or no, anything? She, she, she knew me. She I was in the neighborhood. She's Lucy Snallgrass. She's Lucy Snallbush. <laughs> 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 what the fuck? What the fuck are you going to call the cops, boy? Oh, man, what a crazy name. I knew the mother, I knew the brother, I knew the father, I knew the whole fucking family. How could she not get tortured? In, in school just for that. Oh, name. we tortured her. You know we yeah. tortured Lucy Smallbush the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> we called her Lucy Bush. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Lucy Bush. Fuck it, dog. I'm telling you. Any girl with a last name that's Bush, what a Lucy Smallbush. And she's on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> she won't be my friend, but she's on Facebook. Oh, she no. hasn't taken my friend's uh, class. You know what I'm uh, I think the therapist told her I was fucked up what happened 20 oh years ago. God. One night I was staying at that hotel and I was hungry. One afternoon. And I crossed the street to the gas station because that's how much money I had. And I saw a for help sign. And I asked the guy, what, what are you looking for? And he goes, I need to marry a bum gas from 4 to 12. I go, okay. Can, when can I start? He goes, tonight. He goes, what's your name? I'm like, Ryan Sickler. He's like, Ryan Sickler. Okay, I see you at 4 o'clock. So I come back and I realize I'm by myself. So he trains me for the first hour. I went across the street and I'm pumping all this gas. And he told me, he goes, it's night, light, nighttime, so drop. Every time you got 500 in your pocket, put an envelope what time, sign this paperwork, and put a drop in there. I didn't, I didn't see the reason to, you know? So every hour, like he told me, I'd take like a dollar bill and drop it. A dollar a bill dollar and drop bill. it. Because for some reason it was like computerized. He goes, I'll find that in my house if you don't drop. So about fucking two o'clock, I realized, I got about $1,200. Plus what's ever in the register, plus the food, Plus, he's got a box of change under the fucking register. So I took everything. <laughs> <laughs> I took everything at 3 o'clock. Hershey bars, the whole fucking thing. And I just walked across Route 4, jumped over the fucking banister in the side of it. Cars were whizzing by me doing 90. And I went home. The next morning, I look up. I look out my hotel window. Cops are there. Yeah. The whole thing. People have been pumping gas for free for four hours. <laughs> Have you, have you ever heard the story? No, what's the story? Oh my God. When Ralphie first moved to, a lot of people don't know, like, when you move to an old Hollywood neighborhood, you'll see a celebrity in that neighborhood. And you go, why is that person here? Well, because they lived in that neighborhood before they made it. Uh. And now they're going to visit their friends. In that neighborhood, it was the chick from The Wrestler. My cousin Vinny. <clears throat> oh, Marissa, Marissa Tomei. Tomei. Marissa Tomei's sister lived on that block. So you would see her walk with the dogs all the time. And this is a shitty part of Hollywood. Guns N' Roses had a garage across the street <coughs> where they lived. So it was by the Guitar Center right there. And there's a big garage behind where Matthew McConaughey, uh, where fucking uh, what Marissa Tomei's sister lives. And that's where Matthew used to have his cars when he was broke. They're broken down garages. And he had like a, a Volkswagen, you know those two door Volkswagens? Yeah. With the trunk in the front, he had one of those, and the, no, not a beetle. The the rabbit. The rat, like not the rabbit, the square one, but the longer one. It doesn't matter. Anyway, he had one of those in his in his garage, and he would come back there and work on them. I didn't know this. I didn't even know there was garages back there, but Ralphie lived on Schrader. Back in that neighborhood, that neighborhood was Josh Wolf on Vista. Ralphie was on Schrader. Nick DiPaolo and Mitch Hedberg were on Sierra Bonita, and Doug Stanhope was on Curson. Wow. This was a hell of a fucking neighborhood. Yeah. And we'd all play tennis at 3 o'clock down by Gorky Park, a Russian park on yeah. Fountain there. <laughs> Bro, on. They used to sell nickel bags at the park back then. Every <laughs> afternoon, we'd make Doug Stanhope, would make fucking sun tea, and we'd all meet there at Gorky Park. That's what Mitch Hedberg wrote the joke about. I can't, I'll never be as good as my wall playing tennis. <laughs> All that uh, shit. I still remember coming to my house with Mitch smoking dope and him telling me about thinking of moving to New York. Uh, I don't know if it's a good move and me going, bro, there's nobody in New York like you. 
I don't belong in New York. There's 20 of me there. <laughs> but you, there ain't nobody like you in New yeah. York. And he got to New York and he blew up like a motherfucker. Wow. Uh, that was a hell of a fucking neighborhood. Okay. So what happened with the, uh, Matthew McConaughey? Matthew McConaughey, yeah. So Matthew McConaughey was one of the celebrities in that neighborhood. And one day I'm sitting upstairs with Ralph and he's like, you see this motherfucker out here? I'm like, who is it? He's like, Matthew McConaughey. Ralphie had a screen on his window. You could see out, but you couldn't see in. And Ralphie would sit there in the afternoons and go, Matthew McConaughey, you suck. <laughs> 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 you suck. For 15, 20 minutes. And after a while, Matthew McConaughey would throw his wrench down and go, who the fuck is saying that up there? <laughs> fuck you. You got the balls to say it. He, Matthew McConaughey, you suck. <laughs> fuck you. And then the next day again, and then he would start with Matthew McConaughey. You owe me seven fifty for the wedding singer, whatever that fuck. Is. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you! How many movies have you done? But he couldn't see us, but we could see him. <laughs> and it was like a torture chamber for like three months. Every time he went back there, Matthew McConaughey, I'm not listening to you, motherfuckers, today. Leave me the fuck alone. Every day we had a war with him. Ralphie had a war with him. And you've never connected with McConaughey about this? No, until one day I went to Ralphie's and McConaughey was sitting on his... No. Ralphie went because McConaughey threatened him. How about I come up there and beat you up? Ralphie's like, Matthew McConaughey, you suck. <laughs> it was like a broken record constantly. <laughs> Matthew McConaughey, you suck. That's oh, fuck. crazy. Ralphie's a Texas boy, too. Yeah, yes. he's Houston as well, oh, right? So then they became okay. friends. Yeah. I go up there one day, he's on the couch sitting there smoking bongs. I'm like, what the fuck? Wait, they became homies? They became like for that day. Then Dude. Ralphie hit and he moved and I don't know what happened to their relationship. Wow. <laughs> and I said, Jesus Christ. I don't know if I'm gonna shit myself or fart. But let me just I take see a chance. Well before. Ooh, good move. And, and I blew this fart, Joe Rogan. That was so bad. <laughs> right? We were on a bus and people started running, you know the school buses? People started running to the windows, right? To swing down the bus windows. But here's where it gets better. I fought it again. And the teachers were going, oh my God, he's changing flavors. But the worst, <laughs> but the changing flavors. But the worst thing was, oh. the cheerleaders were crying. That's how bad it smelled. <laughs> they were sitting in front of the bus going, ah, ah. Wait a minute, he's changing flavors. Oh. You ever have those loads? Like I, I, used to, I used to be on probation. And there was a dude that was like a G.I. Joe dude that failed the police test. But his assistant was a good-looking woman. Like, she was kind of cute. If I was 30, she was, like, 38. Nobody talked to her in Boulder because she had, like, a wooden leg. Like this her one leg again. Was that, <laughs> that little limp. But you could tell the bitch had game. Like, she could suck a cock. I would look right. in the eyes and I right. could tell this bitch is deadly. But nobody talks to her because of the fucking wooden leg. Or yeah. whatever the fuck she's got. She got shot in Vietnam. I didn't know what happened to her. <laughs> and she was very nice. I forget what her name was. I'd see her. I'd always flirt with her. But when I was doing, and I was in the probation, I figured out how to fuck with the piss test. I'm uncircumcised, so I would take, like, fucking pool cleaner and put it on my dick and then pull the skin over it <laughs> and put, like, a tab over it, like a bread tab, like a, like a fucking rubber band. And then when I would go pee, the guy would watch me. And I would take my the thing out and just pee and then pull the skin back and all the pool cleaner would go into the fucking thing and then I would zap the machine. They would always say to me, this motherfucker's up to something. So he asked her, he goes, maybe you could see what the fuck he's doing. So I would, I, I, I knew and I would call and go, I'll be there at four because they would call you and then you had to call a machine that would tell you what color was up. Mm -hmm. And if the color came up, that you, let's say your color is maroon and they go, today's colors are green, maroon and black. You would have to call in and tell them what time you're coming in. You had till five o'clock, but you had to make an appointment. Then she'd tell you, no, no. If he answered, that means he was gonna watch you while you're pissed. But with me, they had mirrors around me. They couldn't figure out what I was doing. So they sent her in. So before I would go in, I'd fucking do a half a jerk in the car and get my dick nice and big. Yeah. And then I'd sprinkle it the fucking... Uh, Pool cleaner. The pool cleaner. Or <laughs> the the fucking doesn't sting your dick, the it pool did. cleaner? It did. I got scars. I got little holes in my dick and wow, Drano. Yeah. I would grind it up. I would fucking put it under my dick and pull the skin back. I would fall into the piss test and zap it. But before I would piss, I would take the hammer out and show it to her. Like, what do you think? What do you think? There's something nice. And she would look at it and look around the room. 
and not like I knew I, I was going to end up sleeping with her or swapping spirit with her because I flirt with her. Nobody yeah. talked to the woman because she had a fucked up leg. So I'm off probation. I'm delivering Chinese food and I'm slinging coke at the same time at the Chinese restaurant. So I would have to. I would have you call the Chinese restaurant and say, Can "I talked to Joey. Yeah, what's up? Oh, you want egg drop soup? Whatever." The cocaine would be hidden under the egg drop soup, so that if I got in trouble, the Chinese people got in trouble. I didn't put it in the bag. This was out, when I was out already, out of prison. <laughs> One night I knock on the door. Who answers the door? It's her. And she goes, "Oh my God, it's so great to see you." How have you been? And I go, it's great to see you. Man, I gave her a hug, and I put the Chinese down, and she goes, what are you doing with your life? I, I go, I'm getting divorced, but I got to stand up comedy, and I'm trying to deliver food to make a living. And she's like, oh, that's so sweet. You, you and her broke up? Oh, you must need a hug. And as I started hugging her, we started swapping spit, and I touched a little monkey, and I could feel nobody had even touched a monkey in like 10 years. The steam started coming up. <laughs> And I started fingering that motherfucker like a savage and swap and spit with her. And my hand was nice and wet. And I fingered like a pinky surrounding her asshole. And I'm working. And finally, I put it down slowly. And I pop her pants. I take her tit out. She's got one big fucking tit. And I'm, I'm fucking I'm making out with her. I'm fingering her at the same time. Holy so I'm, I'm shit. Her. I take her pants down. But I go, I don't want to see what the other leg is. So I took the leg off of the good leg. And I left a fucking bad leg covered because I don't want to know what yeah. it is. If she's got like a pole under there, one of those fucked up feet. <laughs> so I picked fucking up a fucking leg and I started eating her pussy. And the clit fucking was huge. I'm sucking on it like a piece of, like a piece of bubble. Come I look up at her and she's like this, Christina, with her mouth open. I go, now's the time to put the helmet in that fucking mouth. <laughs> So I switched up, I started two finger Louie and I went around her and I put that fucking hammer in her mouth and she didn't know what to do. She's like, mm, mm. And I was and at that time and at that time I was trying to fucking lift weights and shit. So I wasn't jerking off. Because somebody told me not to jerk off that your protein. I was yeah. retarded. Yeah. Dog, you know, I'm retarded. Yeah. And when I came in the mouth, it was one of those loads, Christine, that don't stop. Yeah. You ever have one of those things? I know, Christine. And you're sucking it. You're sucking it with your eyes closed. <laughs> and then after face. a minute, you open it up because you're like, when is this going to stop? And I could look at her swallowing it, and it was endless. It was yeah. fucking endless. It was just a load of death. Yeah. It was like a month and a half of not coming. There was Valium in there. It was <laughs> well, it's so nice seeing you, Joey. Thanks for stopping by. I shot a load in the mouth, and when I took my dick out, she went, ah. <laughs> It was like she drank a gallon of Mountain Dew. She looked at me. She started getting a little dizzy. <laughs> oh, my God. I was selling Valium at the time. I was taking like 100 milligrams of Valium a night. What I shot in her mouth to put her in a trance. She was glassy eyed. She gave me a $3 tip and I left. And I never saw her again. Uh, she must have ate that Chinese food and slept for a week. Oh my God. Oh. Do you got any Christ. dates coming up you want to plug? <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can still you got a Twitter feel, handle. You, you can still feel that? what that nut felt like. It was like a, like a three-minute nut. Yeah. Wait a minute. You didn't even bang her? You no, didn't put it no. in her vagine? No. No. Well, that's, no. That's, that's the the pussy eating was tremendous. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I licked her ass Sorry, I blacked and, out oh, at yeah, some yeah, point. Yeah. I didn't I'm listen sure. closely. Once I shoved my tongue in your ass, you black out. It's like it's like you're 14 and your uncle's molesting you. You know what I'm You just black out and let happen what's going to happen shit. anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like he painted a beautiful picture. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Joey. Let's carry on. Uh, <laughs> okay. Dark humor, not everybody gets it. There are only two genders, okay? So, I don't know where this is going. Is this merch? Why am I, what is this? Cup with hunger. Okay, I have to have there that coffee yeah, first. Yeah. Then I gotta wait 10 minutes, then I gotta hit the tutsuruts. Mm -hmm. And then once I hit the tutsuruts, about an hour later, when I smell bacon, before I go in the shower, then I go, you know what, I could eat some. At one point, do you shit out the window? Uh, do you ever do that for old time's sake? 
No. About eight years ago, I started shitting in tubs because I just couldn't take it no more. While Shut was, up. While I was taking the shower, why get out? No. Let me tell you something. For some reason or another, no. listen to me, Jessica. For some reason or another, no. for about two years, every I hate going. I like shitting before You're I go so in the clean. shower. But I like shitting before I go in the shower. I don't want to take a shower and then walk around with a dirty ass it's all day shit. because it leaks. You got to you got to stop every up. hour and clean it, and then it gets hot out. Mm -hmm. So I don't like. I like taking a shit before I go in the yeah. shower. But there's some days the system don't work according to your fucking pussy schedule. So you wash and then you come out. Some days I was taking a shower and as soon as the water would hit my back, I had to take a shit. I think mean, that's the worst. Let me tell you something. When you got to dry off and to take, take a, a shit, shit and, and it's and it. And it makes you have to go toilet? to the bathroom as soon as the water hits you. So sometimes you do sit on a wet toilet, and it's a horrible it's feeling. It's the worst feeling. <laughs> it's a horrible feeling. So for a while there, I was just saying, fuck it, let me just shit while I'm taking a shower. So you, you would just, how, would you I would unscrew, scoop it out? No, I would either unscrew that thing. Sometimes I'd pick it up with my hand and just throw it right there. No! Joe, no, stop! That's how disgusting I am. Sometimes I would just shit. In Vegas, sometimes I was eating pills and doing ball, and I would just sit in the thing with my legs open like a Chinese guy. You know how they shit in China, but only with water hitting my ball sack and my ass. Like the same time. Oh my god! And I would just shit and watch the shit come out with all the particles, and then I get like the soap and push it down the hole like no! a No! Yes, I would. I'm disgusting. I, I gotta admit to it right now. Anybody who's ever taken a shower at Joey Diaz's house? No, not this welcome. house. Welcome. I would do it in the hotel. Oh, okay. I would oh, Jesus. Push it down. The peanuts would get stuck in the thing, <laughs> so the drains couldn't go back down. Oh, you don't know. I can't you stay don't. in hotels anymore. <laughs> I'm never staying in you, another hotel. You don't know what life oh is like. Oh, my God. Yours, Papa Dios, they were legit to quit. <laughs> but the Ali's were the first people I ever met, ever, beside my godfather that ever <coughs> spoke to me about sex. And then I had this Puerto Rican dude on my block, Puerto Rican Nelson. He lives in the back. He was a bartender in the city. He used to always ask me. And he wasn't a freak of nothing. I always thought that at one point he would molest me. Yeah. And even till today, I think deep sometimes. And fucking Puerto Rican Nelson never molest me because he used to always have a robe on and slippers and shit. <laughs> That's how he walked around? Oh, my God. Puerto Rican Nelson. Puerto Rican You're Nelson. not sure if he did. <laughs> You feel like it's maybe... Yeah, like I think, did he ever dope me? Like he ever put a cosby behind me? Because everything about him fits like an M.O. He was just a good dude. Yeah. That we used to go outside and help us fix our bike. And he was a Spanish dude. And he was just, you know, he had the sideburns and the leather jacket. And it was the fucking early 70s. And I moved to Jersey. And he would talk to a bunch of us. And one day he would take us in the back. His claim to fame with me was that I became friends with him. And I go over there, and he had a black friend uh, that had went over to the, the Rock of Gibraltar, and he brought pictures back. And then he would just talk to me. And then one day, he asked me, 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 me. <laughs> you got a couple of beers. You ever go to somebody's house, and you, you go to their house a lot, and they're sober, but one day you catch them, and they're fucking hamming. Yeah. And we go over there, and it's like early in the morning. Like, I used to go over there every morning at 10. And wake him up and, 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 what's up, man? What are we going to do today? Give me an hour. I'll go out there and play stickball with you. And he come out with coffee and he reeked of alcohol. Yeah. You know, he was <laughs> one of those dudes in the summer. You know, no air conditioning. Your place. Just a dynamite dude. Yeah. And one day, uh, I knock on the door and he answers with a towel around him. And he's sitting down like he's all fucked up. I go, Nelson, you going to play football? He's like, man, not today, you know, and all this shit. He goes, come back in like two hours. So, you know, we were, in those days, you're punctual. Yeah. Like, we were there in two hours. He answered, though, you guys again? The fucking curtains were still up. He invites us in. He's got a towel on. You know, he turns the light on, and there's like a table filled with alcohol, you know, and like. Oh, yeah? How old were you at this point? Twelve. <laughs> Twelve, and I can't remember who what? the fuck I walked in there with, like. It was like six of us in the neighborhood that liked Nelson, but two of us actually interacted a little closer with Nelson. Yeah. I was Spanish, so I understood Nelson's world. I knew Puerto Rican people, but I can't believe who else <laughs> was the other guy that mingled with Nelson. So we had woken Nelson up. 
He goes, come in, come in. We sit on this couch. You guys want a soda? He gives us a soda. He puts the TV on. You can see he's still fucked up from the night before. He's got the towel on. And he's like, so you guys get late? And we don't know what the fuck he's talking about. Like, nobody ever spoke to me like that. I had uncles that would ask me, did anybody suck your dick yet? Yeah. Are you pissing sweet yet? That type of shit. <laughs> but this... <laughs> you pissing sweet. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. When you're Spanish, they preguntan, oye, tu me You know what I'm saying? Great. Yeah, it's, it's a great line. <laughs> but Nelson was basically the first person ever. But oh I, I known about sex, but Nelson was the first person ever that said it could be yours. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, what do you mean you never had sex? I got a girl right now. She'll come over and clean your pipe. And we're, like, and we're both like fucking <laughs> shit in our pants. <laughs> Yeah, you come up with like ten dollars or something. We're like, nah, nah, nah. So that was it. He never talked about it again. And then one day we're sitting there like a month. I just love this a guy. Like a, a guy month. in a fucking towel as neighborhood boys over and offers to get them a whore. <laughs> because he's outraged that they haven't had sex at fourteen or twelve. <laughs> so he was cool as fuck. If I found out that my 12-year-olds were hanging out with grown-ass men, especially like in a towel and shit, like, I'm gonna have a problem with that. Like, that dude is gonna get dead, right? Like, fuck you. <laughs> I don't even care if he doesn't have bad intentions, right? Like, he's just, you know, like, it's not malicious, but even then, that's fucking no, dude. That's how fucking Michael Jackson fucking <laughs> was caught up in all that shit. Fucking R. Kelly and all that, dude. Like, fuck that. Too many weirdos out there. So, hell no. And before of you guys, before you guys fucking say, oh, well, Michael Jackson, you know, he never got in trouble. He never got convicted. Blah, blah, blah. Just ask yourself this. Would you ever let Michael Jackson babysit your kids? And if the answer is no, that's what I'm talking about right there. <laughs> he could have never done anything wrong, right? But just the idea. That dude was weird. That dude was a weirdo. And uh, yeah, absolutely, I would not let him babysit my children. Absolutely not. And fucking this, this story he's telling, Fuck that. That's a witch hunt, dude. Like, I'll come after this fucker. <laughs> Let's carry on. He used to play basketball with us and shit. So one day, I go away with this kid, and he starts telling us. What's his name again? Puerto Rican Nelson. You know? <laughs> No, Puerto Rican <laughs> Nelson was cool as fuck because he used to bring us weed from the city and he would actually give us seven joints for five dollars. Wow. He really took care of us. It wasn't like he was a bad guy, which to me meant the world because a lot of people could bring you weed over in those days, but they say, I take a joint off the top. Hmm. He was like, I, I got to go over there anyway. Don't worry about it. The guy gives me a better deal. So I always liked him because of that. So one day we're there and a, church, and a girl's there. A girl comes out of his bedroom. Me and my buddy are like, wow. Like, what are we going to know? Someone abroad. She sits on his lap and shit. And he's like, yeah, this is my girl. And he's feeling her up. He's making out in front of her. <laughs> and feeling the titties and shit. <laughs> and me and my buddy are frozen. Like, we're just, I can feel, I can feel, I can't remember who the fuck it was. So, wow. boom, how old just, was this guy? This guy had to be 28, and the bro was like 21. But he, was, he was one of those, he had to be 26. <clears throat> he, he was from somewhere else, and he lived there. This is before the computer, and before Neighborhood Watch. And, before, like, <laughs> and, and no one was freaked out by a pack of 12 year olds hanging out with them. No, because like, in those days, a lot of parents came out and played with kids. And you I know, that's different types. now. See, it's different now. I would never now. be able to play with a random kid no, in my neighborhood. No, so everybody knew him from the neighborhood, and in those days, we wanted to go into the murky waters. Yeah. And he was kind of opening the door. Not really, to be honest with you. Mm. It took a long time. It's not like he lurked us into his house and said, do you guys want to have sex? This is after we knew him for a year. Right. We'd, we'd go back there all the time and get water after a basketball game. We knew him, you know. 
But now he knew we were growing up and he knew what our needs were. I look at it now like he was he was just trying to but we couldn't handle it. Yeah. So one day we're sitting back there, we had a basketball game and he's like, Hey man, what'd you think of that fucking broad the other day? Me and my buddy like, Oh, she was banging. He goes, I'll tell you what. He goes, Tell tell these guys how hot she was. And me and my buddy's like, Yeah, she was hot. And he's like, Oh, when can we see it? He goes, Listen, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. <laughs> he goes, Listen, I'm gonna fuck her tonight in the living room and I'll leave the window open. You guys can come by and listen. <laughs> <laughs> that was his thing for like a dollar a piece that was his fetish oh my god he got he into was... boys listening to him <laughs> fuck we got there he was fucking the shit out of her doggy style we all ran away we were like mortified <laughs> we got there 10 minutes before he started fucking it we're like, not even in there. And all of a sudden, you heard her go, oh, oh. And he's like, yeah, that's it. Suck it. <laughs> we tried to look. We <laughs> there must have been eight of us trying to look at that window. We just heard them fucking fucking. And I heard meat. Like, that's the first oh, time I heard balls. Yeah. Hit. And we <laughs> ran out of there, dog. And the next day, he's like, <laughs> the next day, he's like, did you guys come by? <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, uh. <laughs> That's the weirdest fucking neighborhood guy I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Holy shit. Wow. That guy's great. Okay, abrupt ending, but uh fucking Joey Diaz and fucking what was it, Puerto Rican Nelson? <laughs> oh. <laughs> and then fucking shitting in the shower, like God, that's fucking disgusting. <laughs> I think the only thing worse than that is shitting while you're taking a bath or something. <laughs> Holy wow. And then the, the, the fake foot. That lady, right? I've heard that one before. Well, oh my god, I could probably hear that shit six more stop six more times. Like <laughs> ten more times. God, this fucker has no filter. And like I was saying, man, he's probably on some list or something. He's done some questionable shit. I mean he's literally been in prison, right? So like it wouldn't surprise me, right? <laughs> um but yeah. If you enjoyed this, if you enjoy fucking this kind of content, go ahead and, and let me know by giving me a like, right? Um, not only does that apply to the OG subscribers, but also the new folks that have never seen my channel before, right? Welcome to fucking Team Chango. Um, so yeah, go ahead and like, go ahead and subscribe. So that way you get notified every time I post some dumb shit. Uh, especially, yeah, go ahead and hit that notification bell so you get notified every time. I'm posting all kinds of shit. This video is going to be in the playlist. So go ahead and hit show, uh, watch all those other ones. I got like maybe 15, 20 video, like Joey Diaz videos. Fucking put that shit on autoplay and sit back, kick back, and just watch this dumb shit. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I have good input, and sometimes not. Either way, it is what it is. I am me. I am your boy, Chago. And by subscribing to him the notification bell, you will be Team Chango, right? <laughs> you will join the, the, the Chango squad, right? Um, but anyways, that's all I got. You guys take care. Peace out.